when an object with mass is on an inclined surface, the first force to identify is that it has a weight force acting downward. And the weight force, of course, equals to the mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration. On the surface of Earth, this value is an average of 9.8 meters per second squared. It is important to note that even though the surface may be inclined at an angle theta, the weight force is still going vertically downward. So the weight force vector does not change direction when the object is on the inclined surface. However, what changes is that the normal force vector is no longer going upwards. Remember, the normal force vector always remains perpendicular to the surface. So because now the surface is inclined at an angle, the normal force will also be inclined at an angle here as well. The effect of weight force on an object on an inclined surface depends on the actual angle that the surface is inclined at. When you're analyzing the effect of weight force, we need to resolve it into its perpendicular components. So I'll do the same thing here for the two scenarios. It doesn't matter whether the angle is 45 degrees or 60 degrees, we can draw two right angle triangles to find the two perpendicular components of weight force. If I draw a dashed horizontal line so that it's parallel to the ground, hopefully you can convince yourself that this angle here is also 45 degrees because of alternate angles and parallel lines. And this angle here will then be 90 minus 45, which gets you 45 degrees as well. And that's because the horizontal line and the downward force vector makes a right angle here. And finally, this angle here will also be 45 degrees because this component of weight force will make a right angle triangle with the inclined surface. Let's do the same thing for this surface here. Let's draw a dashed line. This angle here will be 60 degrees. This angle here will be 90 minus 60, which is 30 degrees, because this angle here is a right angle. This angle here would be 90 minus 30, which gives you back 60 degrees. Again, it's because this component of weight force is perpendicular to the actual inclined surface itself. That's why we subtract 30 degrees from 90 to find the angle here 60. So this component of weight force will be given by mg sine 45 degrees. And this component of weight force will be given by mg cosine 45 degrees. Similarly, when the angle is 60 degrees, this component becomes mg sine 60 degrees. And this component here becomes mg cosine 60 degrees. The general expression for the two components will be mg sine theta and mg cosine theta. What we are really concerned about is the first one here, because this vector, as you can see in the diagram, is acting down the inclined surface. This is what's going to cause the mass to slide downward. For the sine function, as the angle increases, you will expect that the value of sine theta to also increase. So for example, sine 0 degrees is 0, and then it reaches a maximum value of 1 when the angle becomes 90 degrees. So when you're comparing sine 45 versus sine 60 degrees, obviously mg sine 60 degrees is going to give you a much larger value compared to mg sine 45 degrees, which means when the surface is inclined at a much bigger angle, the component of the weight force acting down the slope is going to be much larger which makes sense because the object is more likely to fall downward when the angle is much larger. On an inclined surface, the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface, but it does not remain equal to the weight force. The normal force in this case is actually equal to this particular component of the weight force, and that was equal to mg cosine theta. So the normal force here is actually equal to mg cosine theta. So when the mass is on the inclined surface, the normal force does not equal to the weight force anymore. It equals to the weight force multiplied by cosine theta, where theta is the angle at which the surface is inclined at. When the surface is frictionless, even though the normal force is balanced by this particular component of the weight force, which is mg cosine theta, the other component of weight force, that is mg sine theta, is never balanced by any other force vectors which means 
in the direction that's either going down or going up the slope, the net force is never equal to zero. mg sine theta can never be balanced as there are no other force vectors in that direction. In simpler words, on the frictionless surface, the object will always experience motion down the slope, which is due to mg sine theta, resulting in motion with acceleration. So the object will start to increase in its velocity going down the slope. A 2 kilogram mass is placed on a frictionless surface inclined at 30 degrees above the ground. What is the net force acting on the mass? So let's draw a diagram. So we have a 2 kilogram mass over here and it's inclined at an angle of 30 degrees above the ground. We have the weight force going down, mg, and we have the normal force extending from the surface and remaining perpendicular to the surface. First of all, let's resolve the weight force vector into its two components. This angle here will be theta, which is 30 degrees, and this is mg cosine 30 degrees, and this is mg sine 30 degrees. To find the net force on, acting on the object, we need to consider the net force in two different directions. In the first direction, we know that the normal force minus mg cosine 30 degrees gives you a net force of zero because the object is in equilibrium in that particular direction. So the normal force is equal to mg cosine 30 degrees. In the other direction, which is going down the slope, the net force is equal to mg sine 30 degrees. This is the only force vector acting in that direction because the surface is frictionless. So this is equal to 2 kilograms times by 9.8 times by sine 30 degrees, which gives a value of 9.8 newtons down the slope. A 5 kilogram mass is placed on a frictionless surface inclined at 45 degrees above the ground. So again, let's draw a diagram. So 45 degrees, and we have a mass. That's 5 kilograms, we have the weight force vector going down, let's call it mg. We have the normal force vector that's perpendicular surface. So the weight force vector can be resolved into its two perpendicular components. This angle here will be 45 degrees. So this is mg cosine 45, and this is mg sine 45. So when the normal force is equal to mg cosine 45 degrees, because these are balanced in that direction, and the net force in the direction down the slope is simply equal to mg sine 45 degrees. This is equal to 5 kilograms times by 9.8 times by sine 45 degrees. This gives a net force value of 34.6 newtons down the slope. Before we can find the velocity, we need to find the acceleration that's due to this net force. This can be done by using Newton's second law. The net force is equal to the mass times by its acceleration. The net force is 34.6 newtons is equal to 5 kilogram times by the acceleration. Acceleration equals to 6.93 meters per second squared down the slope. Then we can use the kinematic equation of V equals to U plus AT to calculate the final velocity. The initial velocity is zero because the object initially is at rest plus 6.93 times by 2 seconds after the mass starts moving. And this gives a velocity of 13.86 meters per second down the slope. Now, keep in mind that forces, acceleration, and velocity, these are all vector quantities. So in addition to magnitude, you must also give the direction. This concludes the video on forces on a frictionless inclined surface.